let's talk about what changed. The definition of contracting is found in Arizona Revised State Statute under 425075. The definition changed slightly, and you're not going to really get what it is unless I point it out. There are some words missing. It looks the same as it always has, except it no longer says adding to or subtracting from. And the reason that changed is because adding to something that already exists doesn't necessarily change its identity. And subtracting from doesn't necessarily change its identity. So those now are out of there. Also out of there are repair, maintenance, and replacement. Those now become those things that are considered service contracting. Everything else remains pretty much the same as it was under the regular contracting. So with that, since some people don't have to pay us anymore, some might not even need to be licensed. Shocking. Um, Who is required to be licensed? Prime contractors have to have a KPT license and are subject to tax under prime contracting. They perform, coordinate, supervise modification work, including contracting with subcontractors. Modification work. <laughs> Changing the identity of a piece of property completely. It was an open field. It's now a warehouse. It was an open field, subdivided, and now it's a bunch of track homes. It was a warehouse, it's been mowed down, and now it's a flat open field ready to be developed to something else. Okay? The prime contractor is the person responsible for the contract and the completion. He's subject to prime contracting TPT regardless of whether he furnishes only labor or both labor and materials. This comes into play specifically with demo. Because there's never, hardly ever, materials with demolition. You knock it down, you scoop it up, you drive it away. Okay? Those people are still going to be prime contractors. Some people do not have to have licenses. <coughs> contractors are not required to have a TPT license if they solely perform contracts for the property owner or the owners of the improvements to real property for the maintenance, repair, replacement, or alteration of existing property. A guy is hired by a homeowner to come in and remodel a whole entire kitchen. Brand new cabinets, brand new countertops, brand new fixtures. He's tiling the backsplash, they're painting the ceiling, and she's putting in a brand new kitchen island. Tax on every single piece of material the contracting is not considered contracting. That is an alteration and repair and replacement. What if they're adding on to the house? Adding on to the house, um, it's going to generally be considered also an alteration. Generally, is it you're confident of that answer? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> there are some rules. There are some things. Um, there are some very specific examples um, in our FAQ that's 13 pages long. There are some situations where if they were doing some stuff, and, and this is getting into this realm called de minimis, uh, there are some situations where some of the things that you could do as adding on to a house could be considered being modification and would fall under the contracting realm. And we recognize that. One of the things we're going to talk about in a minute is uh, change orders, change orders stand alone, and also if the part that would be considered a modification during the process is uh, something that is less than 15% of the total cost of the job, it's considered de minimis and we wouldn't make it be taxable as contracting if it's de minimis. And let me give you an example because uh, yeah, oh, I could say always or I could say never and it's not going to apply. Um, I'm adding on to the back of my house. I currently have a freestanding garage out there. I'm not adding on to the garage. I want the garage knocked down. I want new footers poured, but uh, I'm doing a whole mess of other work inside the house. So the footers and the knocking down and demo is less than 15% of the total job. In that case, it would not. It would fall under de minimis of the total contract. So there are rules, and you'll have to look at that, the specific stuff that's there. But I'll give you another example. Um, and it doesn't have to do with dollar amount other than the percentage of the contract. Another example, um, and it's in our, our 13 pages. I have a dam that dams a whole entire waterway, a hydroelectric dam. 
the person who is the entity that owns the dam is paying me to add 10 feet in height to the dam from one side to the other. <coughs> All of that is considered alteration, the taxes on the materials. So it depends on the identity of what you're doing. If you're just adding something, there's already a port foundation and stuff like that there, and it's not going to be a, a huge you know, undertaking to make it so that it's up to code, yeah, that's going to be considered alteration. And if the stuff that you have to do to get it to that point, the modification part is less than 15%, we're going to say that you can treat it all as alteration. If you get into a job and you then realize that there are other things you have to do that become change orders, each change order stands alone as a separate contract. If one of those change orders is for a large amount of stuff that's modification, like you get into the middle of it, she gets the, the addition to the back of the house and then she looks at her backyard and she goes, and now I want a pool. That is a separate contract and that could be considered a modification. So different pieces of it can stand alone once you're in a contract. <laughs> the change order is going to be a bit of a headache. So we set up job accounts and we pre-lean something. So every single person that works for us at Five Hundred is now going to have to understand when somebody calls in to order that this is a change order because they're going to have to call someone because it would be tax exempt because it's new construction, for example. But when the change order is new construction, would that be taxable? Not necessarily. <laughs> the change order, if it's a taxable job, the job is taxable from beginning to end. If it's a situation where the job was non-taxable right. and there's a change order with modification in it, it would become taxable. That's my question. The person contacting you would have to say, and this is a taxable job. This part is taxable, charge me tax. Oh, or don't charge me tax. That's the customer? Not gonna happen 80% of the time. At the front end, maybe not. Yeah. It will get better as the year goes on. Are we gonna send people in to count widgets? No. Are we going to try to work through this with you and get you to the point where in 2016 this is easy? Yeah. Are there people already doing it wrong? Yeah. <laughs> and that's under the old scheme that's been here for 30 years. Yeah. So, yes ma'am. Before you leave licensing, we got something from a client yesterday they received from the registrar of contractors telling them even if they're service and you're telling them they don't need They're only communicating that at this time because they don't have legislation. There's legislation being posted in the first part of 2015 that will handle that. Uh, I've said it a couple times, there's a lot of moving parts. Some legislation didn't necessarily follow. Uh, she's talking about the fact that some contractors, HVAC, plumbers, electricians, those guys, even though they're small, if they're required to be licensed, they're required to be licensed by the Registrar of Contractors and for the transaction privilege tax. We have been in negotiations and talking to the Registrar's Office. The only ones who will be getting this are people who must renew during the first quarter of the year or new licensees. The people who are already licensed, and I think they're on a two-year flip around, the ones who have a good year and a half left are not getting that letter. It's just those people, and it's to cover them because the law hasn't changed for ROC yet. So should we should advise them to renew their license even though we think they'll qualify as a service contract? Sure, sure. Here's what I have to tell you. Do I think every business that could get rid of their license is going to get rid of it in the first few months? No, I don't. Why? Because there's that wait and see. This is kind of big. They're going to wait and see how this all goes and get used to it first. I have had some uh, specific businesses and groups of businesses that told me they are just getting rid of their license and that's all there is to it. Who? Pool service guys. The guy that comes and replaces your pool pump and your jandy thing when all the parts are broken and takes care of doing your pool chemicals and that kind of stuff. He's getting rid of his license. He's gonna pay tax on the parts he buys when he buys them when he drives up to your house and you need them and he's happy. Who else is happy? Landscapers, oh my gosh. What a happy group of individuals they are. Because they don't have to keep track of all this kind of stuff anymore. They're pretty thrilled. Who else is thrilled? Painters. Painters and drywallers, oh, they're happy. Yes, sir. You know, we're a restoration contractor. We've always fallen through these cracks between the ROC and the ACDOR. Um, but with this, this new legislation, I mean, for, for true restoration, the sprinklers go off, service. You are, so we're a service. You are 
is modifying any, anything. Um, You're doing maintenance, repair, and replacement. And so, that, so we're just going to pay sales tax on the in-state materials that we purchase as part of this, our history and our uptake, yep. that type of stuff. That's yep. it. Yep. And that's for state and all the cities. Yes. Okay, so let's go on. Modify. <coughs> Modify. <laughs> We're going to get to that. There's an actual form. Her question is, what if I'm working for a general and I got rid of my license? What do I do? There's a form 5009 that by law, it's 5009L, and it is available on the TPT simplification page. It's specifically for a prime contractor hiring somebody who's given up their TPT license. And we'll get to that here in another couple of slides. But yes, you would be able to purchase without paying tax. Okay. So 